The significant stages in human evolution have always been brought about technological innovations which have translated progress in scientific knowledge into practical applications. For example, in the mid-19th century, the invention of textile looms, together with the spreading of rail transport, led to the growth of industrial society. Electronics and information technology are today bringing about a new revolution that is changing our way of living. Yet the symbol of modern society still remains the motor car, with its powerful and silent engine traveling quietly and safely on its tires. Today we will examine the entire production process of a Marangoni tire. While remaining comfortably seated, that is, without having to roam around the production departments. This will allow us to explore every detail, perhaps in a better way than direct observation would allow. We all know what a tire is, but are we fully aware of all its functions? Tires are the only parts of the car that make contact with the road. They are the elements that transfer power and that give the driver total control over the vehicle. The apparently uniform appearance of tires disguises their complexity. In fact, if we take a look inside a tire, we find a very complex structure. Let's then schematically examine the main components of a tire and their functions. The tire is made up of the following main elements. The casing, that is the load-bearing structure of the envelope containing compressed air. The casing consists of cords made of textile fibers set out in a radial arrangement around the bead wires. The bead wires are made of steel. Then comes the liner, that is the innermost rubber lining, made of a compound with special airtight characteristics. Then there are these steel belts, two elements consisting of steel wires arranged at a certain angle with respect to the tire rolling plane, which have the principal function of limiting deformation and the movements of the tread blocks due to the forces in play when the vehicle is travelling. Then there is the nylon spiral belt wrapped over the steel belts in one or two layers depending on the size of the tire arranged at zero degrees with the respect to the tire rolling plane. The nylon belt is used in the larger tire sizes to improve resistance at high speeds, uniformity and ground contact area. Finally there is the tread strip, that is the layer of compound in direct contact with the road surface. The tread strip is the element that transfers power thanks to its friction coefficient overcoming the so-called drift forces. Thus, a tyre contains three different types of materials present in different percentages. 10% steel, 4% textile fibres and the remaining 86% compounds. In turn, the compounds, that is, natural or synthetic rubber with the addition of various chemical products may be present in up to 12 different formulations in the same tyre. Combining such different materials at the same time ensuring functional efficiency is a real technological challenge. Yet, before beginning our trip through the stages of the manufacturing process, we will try to answer one specific question. Why does a company such as Marangoni decide to design and manufacture a certain type of tyre? <laughs> Marangoni makes products for the replacement tyre market and this is certainly the reference market for all manufacturing decisions. Obviously then, market trends must first be correctly interpreted and then rapidly followed. Once a decision has been made, the development and the design of the new product begins. The development phase involves the construction of various prototypes which undergo a series of strict tests 
and outdoors on the track and on the road. When the final prototype has been approved, the mould is designed and then constructed by specialist companies, after which the production specifications are prepared, describing each phase of the process, formulation of the compounds, to the type of textile fibres and metal cords to be used. Now we'll follow the actual production process of a Marangoni tyre step by step, starting with the production of the compounds. So we'll move to the chemical laboratory. The compounds, which represent 86% of the weight of the tyre, are obviously made above all of rubber, either synthetic or natural. There are also other chemical products such as carbon black, silica and sulphur, as well as wax and antioxidants. To give an example, let's look at the typical composition of a tread compound. Remembering that for each different structural element of the tyre, the composition of the compound varies so as to achieve the best characteristics for the specific role that the element plays in the structure. This diagram shows the operations performed in the compound department of the factory. The various ingredients in the proportions specified in the formula, which is naturally the most jealously guarded secret of each tyre manufacturer, are put into a sort of mixing pot, the Banbury, where they are mixed by powerful motors and heated to a temperature of around 100 degrees. In a few minutes, the compound is ready to be used for the next processing stages. We'll now move back to the factory to see what happens in reality. Now we'll see the ingredients being placed in the Banbury mixer in the chemical laboratory. For better detail and picture quality, this is the same as those used in the compounds department, but much smaller, with a capacity of just 2 kilos. The three Banbury mixtures in the Ananya factory, on the other hand, have a capacity that is 100 times greater and take less than 4 minutes to prepare 200 kilos of compound. The formless and fuming mass coming out of the Banbury mixes, following repeated passages through large steel rollers, is formed into standard sized strips that in the following phases of the production process are transformed into structural elements with the right shape and size for each specific function. The next stage in our trip will show us how an impressive machine, the calendar, impregnates the rayon and polyester fibers with rubber, forming the casing of the tire. We can see this here. In order to correctly carry out their function, the fibres making up the fabric must be bound together by rubber. This is the result of the calendaring phase. The fibres are completely impregnated with rubber. The design of the calendars, despite its size, is conceptually very simple. The fibres and the rubber are passed through four large steel rollers. The pressure applied by the rollers impregnates the fibres with rubber. Let's see how the process works. The fabric supplied on large reels has previously been specially treated by the supplier to increase its adhesion to rubber. Yet that's not all. Before coming into contact with the compound designed especially for this purpose, the fabric must pass through some elements of the machine so that the correct tension is applied and any residual moisture that may affect perfect adhesion to the rubber is removed. A precision mechanism distributes a series of thin cotton threads, parallel and equidistant across the surface of the rubberized fabric. As we will see, these cotton threads are useful references in the following phase of the process, and thanks to the high capacity of cotton to absorb moisture, these provide further barrier against humidity, a problem that lurks at all times in the tyre manufacturing process. The rubberized fabric, after the thickness has been carefully checked using high precision instruments, is again wound onto a large reel, with a layer of normal fabric placed in between to protect the layer of rubber, which in this phase is very sticky. Leaving the calendar, the fabric has the standard width of the reels, 
It therefore needs to be cut to the exact dimensions for the type of tire being made. As seen previously, the fibers must have a radial trend. So the fabric must be cut perpendicularly on the reel and the width must correspond to the profile of the section of the tire while also keeping into account the material turned up around the bead wires. The resulting pieces are joined together and the continuous strip that is created is then wound back onto a smaller reel from which during the tire assembly phase the exact length required is taken. Let's then go back to the factory to see this phase in the process. The perpendicular cutting of the fabric requires precision that only a machine controlled by sophisticated software can guarantee. On the other hand, the operation to join the strips created by cutting the fabric perpendicularly is performed manually, yet this does not mean it is a simple process. The edges of the strips, in fact, must be overlapped with millimetre precision. The trapezoidal rubber section will become the tread of the tyre. The quality of the compound used is responsible for many of the most important characteristics that the user expects from a tyre. Above all, safety, but also performance in all road conditions, comfort and product life. There is no compound that can completely satisfy all these needs at the same time. A single compound can only achieve a good compromise. For maximum results, without compromise, Marangoni has chosen a solution made possible only by the most advanced technology, the cap and base structure. Let's see what this involves and why the structure of a cap and base tyre is a solution without compromise. A section consisting of two layers, yet appearances deceive. The outer layer, the one in contact with the road surface, is made using a special compound formulated uniquely to achieve safety and performance. While the compound used for the inner layer, on the other hand, is optimized to absorb the small irregularities of the road surface to achieve maximum comfort and minimized noise. However, making such a sophisticated structure requires technologically advanced machinery. Marangoni uses an ultra-modern extruder, the Tröster extruder, which allows the simultaneous extrusion of the two different layers, the cap and the base. Let's go back to our model of the structure of the tyre, so as to focus on the next objective, the preparation of the metal belts. In this case, the steel industry only supplies the cording, made up of steel wires, which are then twisted together and coated with brass in order to improve adhesion to rubber. To make the rubberized metal fabric, the first step is to prepare the woven structure, which must have a predefined density. What is the density? This is the number of cords per square centimetre of fabric. The density may vary according to the type of tyre, but in any case must be strictly constant in reference to the design specifications. Let's look at the sequence of operations. A total of 30 kilometres of cord is rapidly unwound from each of the 960 reels supported by a giant structure and is arranged into the ideal shape through a series of grills that guide the cords precisely to the rollers on the calendar where the cords, perfectly parallel and equidistant, are embedded in the rubber. The metal calendar department is undoubtedly one of the most remarkable in the factory, as is clear from these pictures. The metal fabric used to make the belts must also be cut to the predefined tyre width according to the type and the size of the resulting tyre. As with the width, another factor must be kept in consideration. 
the angle of the metal cords in relation to the tire rolling plane. As you will recall, a rubberized nylon belt is mounted and wrapped over the two metal belts. This is no more than 8 mm wide and has one or two layers, depending on the size and type of the tyre. The nylon fibres are arranged in the direction of the tyre rolling plane. The use of the nylon spiral belt represents advanced technology and is usually reserved for the UHP or Ultra High Performance and HP High Performance lines. Barangoni has extended the use of this technique to its entire product line. More traditional technology, used by other manufacturers, involves the use of one or two wide nylon belts. The use of traditional belts instead of nylon spiral belts inevitably leads to a certain irregularity in the thickness at the joint between the belts and this may have a negative impact on the uniformity of the tyre. The spiral winding technology adopted by Marangoni reduces this critical element by eliminating the joints. The bead wires are the elements that, as we have already mentioned, tightly anchor the structure of the tyre to the edges of the rim. The diameter of the bead wire corresponds exactly to the diameter of the rim and must clearly be very precise. Let's go through the steps of the manufacturing process, starting with the reels of steel wire coated with copper to improve adhesion to rubber. A certain number of wires, which varies in relation to the size of the tyre, are grouped together impregnated with rubber and wound on a spiral with a number of turns that also varies depending on the size of the tyre. When using this technology no welding is required. In fact the adhesiveness of the rubber that impregnates the wires guarantees the stability and the non-deformability of the spiral until the curing phase. To check the precision of the diameter of the bead wire, randomly selected samples are fitted on steel rim templates. A simple check that gives certain results and is very quick. A rubber substance in a roughly triangular shape is then applied to the bead wires prepared as described before. It is the filler. The filler is made from a special, very hard compound which is used to make this part of the tyre, the bead, more rigid. So far, we have seen how the main elements that make up a tyre are produced. We've now reached the phase in which all these elements are ready to be assembled to obtain a product that finally starts to look like a real tyre. To create such a complex layout as that of modern tyres, advanced assembling machines are required. In the Marangoni factory, eight unistage machines are currently used. That is, machines that complete all these assembly phases. Two of these machines, among the most advanced from the technological point of view, are made by Krupp, the German metalworking and mechanical giant, while the other six are made by the Dutch company VMI, one of the best known and most prestigious manufacturers of machines for the tyre industry. Observing the operations as they happen, we can witness the significant level of automation reached by these machines.
The Unistage machines are very fast and complete the tyre assembly procedure in less than one minute. Assembly is performed on two separate rotating drums. The first drum places in sequence the two metal belts, the nylon spiral belt and the tread strip. The result is a sort of ring. The second drum, on the other hand, is wound with the liner, the side walls and the rubberized fabric that makes up the casing. The result is a cylinder onto which the bead wires are positioned. The final phase in the operation involves the joining the ring and the cylinder, creating the final shape of the tire. At this stage, our tire is assembled. However, it is still a fragile and easily deformable product because the compounds that make it up are still raw, in a manner of speaking. Furthermore, the tread pattern has not yet been made. We have now reached the last stage, curing. The curing process takes place inside a mold, which due to a predetermined pressure and temperature, cuts the pattern into the still smooth tread and applies the writing on the sidewalls to identify the size, the type and any other useful information. High temperature steam is introduced into the mold from 180 to 200 degrees at a pressure that reaches 20 atmospheres. It takes 9 to 10 minutes to cure a car tire and around double that time for a light transport vehicle tire. In these temperature and pressure conditions, the sulphur contained in all the compounds brings about an important transformation of the rubber, which becomes elastic and permanently loses the plasticity that, before curing, made it easily deformable. Here, at last, is the tar as we are used to seeing it. If we could touch it, we would probably burn our fingers because the heat from the curing process has not yet been dissipated. However, tests are not yet over for the Marangoni tyre. In fact, before being able to reach the finished product store, it still needs to be checked by the force variation machine. The force variation machine, manufactured by the American company Aztec, simulates the actual operating conditions of the tyre, making it turn on a flywheel with suitable load and pressure conditions. During rotation, sophisticated capacitive sensors precisely measure the variations in force caused by both radial and lateral deformation. If the maximum extent of such variations exceeds a certain value, the tyre is not released for sale. Our trip through the tyre production process, from the raw materials to the finished product, is now over. The Marangoni tyres are now ready to be used by customers all over the world. Have a good trip. <laughs>